the subject was interviewed by arson investigators and transported to the Travis County Jail, where he's currently booked in on a second-degree felony arson charge and a third-degree felony prohibited weapon charge. That's the, for the Molotov cocktail. Okay, so, uh, you know, we put some, that, that's a good question. So the way we were able to identify and catch the suspect was working with the excellent video that we obtained here, the pictures of the subject through, through their surveillance video. We were able to put those images out to the media and ask for assistance in identifying the suspect. Uh, we did receive multiple tips regarding the possible identity of the suspect. We looked into those. One in particular uh, stood out to us, and as we looked further into that individual, uh, into some of the social media postings and things like that, it seemed to fit the profile, and there was additional information that we found on the suspect that matched. Uh, we were able to take that information, look into it a little further, and positively ID that person as the person responsible for this fire. No, no history of anything like this. Uh, I, I think it was one of those things, you know, that this person was not happy with the current political climate. He blamed, uh, you know, this office and who they represent for a lot of the issues that he saw as problems with the country. And for that reason, this was an intentional act. This was the intended target. And... Uh, that was why he did what he did. He was he was forthcoming and confessed to that, and you know stated that was why he did it. Can you just say the name and age of the suspect? The, the, uh, sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, the suspect's name is Ryan Faircloth, and he's 30 years old. And what's his bond set at? I'm sorry. What's the question? What's his bond set at? Uh, so his bond is twenty-five thousand dollars for the arson charge, and fifteen thousand dollars for the possession of a pro prohibited weapon charge. I, I don't have that answer. Um, you know, he's he's due his right to due process, and uh, the the second degree felony charge carries two to twenty years. Um, that's the, the that's the range. I can't answer that question beyond that. Can you spell his name, please? It's a uh, Ryan. First name Ryan. R Y A N. Last name is Faircloth. F A I R C L O T H. No significant criminal background. He, he had some. Uh, he has had some involvement with APD, but uh, no significant criminal history that I'm aware of. Uh, do we know if he any background or like health issues in the, of, of, the, of the suspect? I'm sorry. What issues? Uh, health issues. Oh, health yeah. issues. Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay. No. Do you know that a note was left here? Can you say what that note said? Uh, you know, I'd rather not get into the specifics of the note, but I can give you in general terms. Um, he, again, was not happy with a lot of the political climate and, you know, didn't want the influence of the Democratic Party affecting, you know, his city, his state, things like that. That was the, the crux of the letter. Um, in addition to that, you know, he alluded that this may just be a warning and there could be future incidents. And that's one of the reasons why we acted so swiftly and brought in the cooperation of other law enforcement agencies as well as the FBI to assist us so that in, in case this suspect was planning further attacks, we could go ahead and get him off the street to prevent that. Is he an Austin I'm sorry? Is he, an Austin he is an Austin resident. Who made the arrest? So the arrest was made by the Austin Fire Department arson investigators in conjunction with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. They, the, the, the FBI uh, assisted with locating and apprehending the suspect in cooperation with the arson investigation. It was a joint operation. Both, both agencies were represented this morning at the, at the uh, arrest operation. Does he have any affiliation with the uh, Republican Party? Not that I'm aware of. No. Uh, most indications at this point point to, you know, he was sort of a, a, a lone wolf and not working with any type of group. Although, I will say this, is there is still an ongoing investigation into that aspect, and uh, the FBI is looking into that. At this, there's still an ongoing investigation on their end, um, and so I'm sure those, those questions will be answered over the next coming weeks.
Um, so thank you guys for coming. My name is Katie Naranjo. I'm the chair of the Travis County Democratic Party. That's K-A-T-I-E-N-A-R-A-N-J-O. So I'd like to thank Captain Dean uh, for joining us today and for the swift work of the public servants uh, and our law enforcement. Um, this is a success story right now because our community came together and we worked together. Thanks to the swift response of AFD investigators, um, we, we were able to work with them to make sure our community is safer. And that is what we're looking for and looking towards as a community, as an America as good as its promise. We've been divided for too long. Lone wolves like this person who attacked our building have been thriving on division and hate. And so we must, as a community, come together and rebuild that trust. We have to work together to make our community better and safer and to deliver on those freedoms. We must expect better from our leaders. In the last 48 hours, I can tell you that I've gotten a number of calls from people. Sadly, there are already people that I knew worried and concerned about our office and about our staff. I'm calling on leaders across both aisles, not just Democrats, but Republicans, independents, to all denounce any type of hate, racism, and misinformation that leads to this type of behavior. While Donald Trump and the far right didn't light the fuse or make the bomb that this gentleman threw into our office, they definitely lit the, the, they definitely lit the fuse of hate. And so we will overcome that. The, we have to overcome that by rebuilding trust. The way we rebuild trust is we speak truth to misinformation. We call out racism and denounce it as we see it happen in our community every day. We also make sure that, we be, that we're vulnerable and open to knowing that we can learn from each other and to actually rely on our neighbors and break down those walls and barriers, but most importantly, participate. If it wasn't for our neighbors um, at Latchkey Bar who helped respond to this incident, who gave us important information, if it wasn't from folks in the community who responded to the footage they saw and gave tips to AFD, and if it wasn't for AFD arson, as well as the FBI, APD, and Travis County Sheriff's Office, we wouldn't have an, uh, this domestic terrorist in custody today. It's by working together that our government works and our community is safer, but also freer. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for the community for responding. And let's all work together to make a safer and more free community. Any questions? Uh, how many calls did you receive overall? A couple hundred calls. Um, and sadly, I only received a call from one Republican concerned about our office, um, and that was City Council Member Mackenzie Kelly. And then all those calls of uh, making through, what, what were people sharing the information with you? Were they sounding frustrated? Were, were they sad? Were, were, what were the feelings? Um, the feelings were that it wasn't unexpected. Um, too often these types of attacks occur. Regardless of if we're Democrats or Republicans or independents or an elected official or candidate, uh, any attack on these institutions, on people participating in our government, is an attack on our country and our community. And so we, we lift up our public servants who are making sure that we have a free and safe place to participate in our government. You can safely vote in Travis County thanks to the efforts of AFD Arson and the FBI. Any that? Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, that was good. Thank you. Yeah. It works. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm sure you'll probably be getting some follow-up. Yeah, I was going to say what next steps would be. Let me, once I get this on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're going to cut it all this time, man. I didn't want to uh, pop in a clip, so I was in the stop by there. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Thank you all. Yeah, so yeah.